Hulkshi. Recorded live. Welcome and good evening to the University of Eucadia call this Wednesday, the 5th of October, 2011. I'm your host, uh, Franco Collins, and I thank all those that will be listening to this call live streaming through TalkShoe.com, or those that will be listening to the call later, either downloading it from TalkShoe or from the website, University of Eucadia. I'll just give out that website for those that are on the call and those that will listen later. It is university.ucadia.info. That's university.ucadia.info. We have some very exciting news to share with you tonight and, and information to share with you. We have a working prototype will and testament that we'd like to share with you based on the research and discussion that we've been going through in the past few weeks about probate law, about wills, about the courts and how in the current system, no wills are validated. All wills are considered claims uh, and that we are all existing under a state of intestate, that they never close the estates. So we want to go through that. I want to go through that carefully on this call and that will be the main theme tonight, will be to go through this document and use it as a launch pad to discuss and describe how we change our position to one of being truly a general executor and guardian, how we establish these facts in the current system, and how we start to see some lasting remedy through this knowledge. As always, whatever we share tonight is the summation of research, of uh, discussion, of debate. Uh, it is not meant to be absolute legal advice. And as always, I ask each and every one of you, please, to consider very carefully what you hear. Uh, and if you have some legal matters, please always go and seek uh, advice. Uh, the call tonight will be the similar format, the same format that we normally do. I want to go through this document with you, and I'll give you the link on where to get the documents in, in a moment. But uh, the normal format tonight will be for the first hour, we'll take the time to go through this document carefully to explore the different elements that are contained within it. We'll do a quick review of what we've been discussing and, and covering the last few weeks. I also want to give you an update and share with you the status in terms of the monetary system and the workbenches, which is still work in progress. And then in the second hour, hour and a half, I look forward to your questions. As always, I ask if you have questions, please wait until the end of the first hour, then type into the chat with all caps the word question so I can see it and we'll go through those. And if you wish to speak live, and I'd love to hear from you live, just press star 8 or hash 8 to get into the queue and we'd love to hear from you if you're sharing your comments and words. Well, let's get started and let's start by giving you the link to the updated documents which provide a practical example of a will and testament template based on the discussions of the last few weeks. Let me give you that link first and then we'll do a quick summary of some of the key points we've been discussing in the past few weeks. The document is available through the following link at Globe Union Court, that is globe-union-court.org and when you get to the home page, I ask if you can click on the link that takes you to Will, and Testament and Probate Law. And when you click on that link to go to the section of Will, and Testament and Probate Law, I ask you to click on Examples. And on Examples, you'll see there are two links at the bottom of that page, one to the example Will and Testament and one to the example Notice of the Existence of a Will and Testament. So please, if you go to globe-union.org, uh, sorry, sorry globe-union-court.org, and then click on Will and Testament and Probate from the home page. Then if you click on Will Examples, you'll come to the example of the Will at the bottom of the page, as well as the example Notice. And by the way, these documents are also available at the other links of Eucadia to the court sites. 
And you can also find those links to the court sites on the home page of One Heaven, one o n e hyphen heaven dot org. Well, before we get into the document, and I would like to start with the last will and testament first. But before we get into the document, let's do a quick summary of some of the very, very important information that we've been discussing in the past few weeks. What we've been discussing in the past few weeks is unearthing and discovering the magic and the knowledge of the private bar guild and the form of law that is first and foremost present whenever we face their courts. And what we have been doing, and it has been a long journey till now, but what we've been doing is unearthing the layers, like archaeology, the layers of law of the Roman system, of the Roman cult, of Western law, to establish a sound foundation of proof and fact, of clear evidence and competence that we know exactly what the bar Guild is doing whenever faced with a controversy or a matter before their courts. What we established is that the system from the 19th century that saw a corporate takeover of the crown of public law to begin to create the corporate fabric which consumed the concept of the crown but then made it a corporation. That what we have seen since the 19th century is that they have considered every single one of us in a state of intestate as either a ward subject to the guardianship of a public servant, ultimately a corporate agent, that we have been considered uh, dead without a will, in which case that they have a free reign as trustees under intestate and probate to administer the estate as they see fit. What we covered as late as last talk show is the fact that not only do they declare us intestate, but even when they conduct probate, they never close off the estate. The estate is kept in, in perpetual um, operation and they're merely rearranging the estate much as what occurs in bankruptcy. So with this knowledge, we've made it clear that in order for us to find redress in their system, as we described last week, one cannot have standing in their system unless one is the bringer of the controversy in which case one is making a claim against the estate, hence why the court is probate, or that we have been appointed and recognised, a key word recognised, as being an official and a position of authority of the estate, that is, as the executor or as an administrator or an agent appointed by the executor. In that scenario, where they declare us intestate, in that scenario where they declare we have no will, when we go to court, either of our own accord, pro se, or we go to court and an attorney is appointed for us, we have no standing. We have no standing. And if we have no standing, then we cannot possibly find any remedy within their system. So, for us to establish standing, for us to find that we can finally have our voice heard so that we can see justice being done, not to abdicate responsibility of controversy. Again, for those that didn't listen last week, I want to make this point very clear from the get-go. All controversy, Eucadia recognises that all controversy must be heard and resolved, whether it is justified or not. That is why Eucadia has, for the first time in history, outside of the Roman cult, the first time a comprehensive civil code, judicial code, and criminal code 
where we identify all aspects of criminality, of civil controversy, of judicial procedure, so that matters can be resolved in the first court, the courts of Eucadia, ahead of any other claimed court. So if a controversy is brought into the court, and we're discussing at the moment these issues of probate and these issues of unfairness of the private bar guild, it is, a, is, it is a matter of restoring the law and a matter of justice, not as a matter of simple technicality that can cause controversies to disappear. Now, while we're not able yet to conduct fully to the satisfaction of our own codes the completion of court matters and hearings, we will be in that position in coming weeks. But in the meantime, I hope to share with you, as we're going in this call and following calls, the brilliant research and knowledge that helps us at least deal with the injustice of the Roman system and the absurdity in how it currently functions and runs. Well, let's get started into this will. And for those that have just come onto the call or those that haven't yet pulled up the document, I'm referring to a document that is downloadable from any of the Acadia court sites. And if you want to get it, please go to globe-union-court.org, click on Wills, Testament and Probate, go to the example page, click on the example will and testament, and you shall see it. Well, let's get started. The first thing you'll see at the beginning of this document, well, let's, let's start by where has this document come from? What is the source of this document? So let, let me cover that first. This document is being put together through the analysis of no fewer than 30 different wills and testaments. All wills and testaments that have been acknowledged and recognized by the Roman system as valid. This document is also being put together upon the thorough investigation and analysis of the Wills Act of 1837. This Act of Parliament of the United Kingdom of the Commonwealth is downloadable from the Will and Testament section that we are currently referring to. And it represents the act from which the modern concept of a Will and Testament was created. So even if one is living in a state such as California or Virginia or, or living in Australia or living anywhere in the world that is subject to Roman law, state law, the Wills Act is the parent act, the birth of the idea of will and testament. And in most cases, when acts of parliament were passed by local estates, it was in most cases in the last century a copy and paste of the Wills Act. So the first thing you'll see when we're going through this is we have the title, Last Will and Testament of, First, Middle, Last Name. Like all Roman form, the title of the form is critical to the creation of the form. If you change the title, you change the form. If you change the form, you render a public form a private form and therefore null and void. I repeat to all that are on the call, do not decide to change the name of forms to your own liking or to what people tell you. The name of a form is in most cases, or in fact, I'd say in all cases, defined by statute and is intrinsic to the validity of form. You change the, the name of it to whatever you like, you've created a private document that has absolutely no worth in their system. Please do not change the title. Just put your name there. So the opening, it says, uh, it says this is the very first line. And this line is entirely consistent with the statutes, acts, and, and rules of a valid will and testament. And we state this, in the name of the one true divine creator and grantor of all free will, all existence, all law, all life, and all property and rights. This is the opening line. Why do we start with that line on a will and testament? We start because we know that under the corporate malfeasance I love that word malfeasance. Under the corporate malfeasance of the present system, they deny we have free will. They're denying our will. 